Mostly focus on international transportation issues, freight distribution, logistics, supply chains, as it relates to you know the globalization process. It started up when I was doing a PhD, mostly about transportation issue, and about China. And back then, China was becoming a major global exporter. And all the American and global companies were starting to relocate in China. And I was uh, working on this, and I saw this taking, pl taking shape. And I said, wow, it's a, it's a very uh, dynamic topic. So I decided to focus on, on freight transportation and ports and, and, and containers, maritime shipping, and everything that makes the global economy runs or run, works, that is, make the good flows, the, sh the shelves, being full of stuff. And the fun part is nobody notices it, unless there's something goes wrong. But otherwise, it runs smoothly, and you go to, to go to your store, and all the stuff is there, because there's a lot of action in, in the background taking care of it. And the fact that we have a lot of goods available on our shelves, or let's say parts for companies who manufacture other things, uh, is linked with advance in uh, transportation technology, that's for sure. One key issue is what we call the container, that little box which can be filled with pretty much anything you want. I've seen so many interesting things, ranging from, of course, the regular fruits and vegetables and, and refrigerated containers to toys, televisions, coffee, grain, um, lumber, whatever. It, whatever can be moved, it can be traded, will be put into a container. I must say the security issue has been a very much exaggerated topic. You always hear a uh, uh, concern about, oh, uh, maybe it's going to be weapons of mass destruction. Of course, it's always a possibility. But the business itself is fairly secure because uh, you have to think about it. You are dealing with major multinational corporations, big companies who are well-known household names, and they take care of their own security. And, and we are dealing with the, the carriers are also major multinational corporations. So we're not dealing with unknown entities trading, let's say, with the United States, with, with most, of, most of the cargo involves large purchasers, large buyers of, of goods, large transporters, and large manufacturers. So overall, the security issue is, of course, always there, but we have not found any much use of containerization or the container itself as a weapon of, let's say, for terrorism. More for a lot of, for, of course, illicit trade. Uh, trades of, let's say, drugs, uh, trades of uh, illegal goods. For instance, if you go to Manhattan <laughs> on the street corner, you're going to find all uh, sorts of illegal uh, handbags and shoes and stuff like that. That's, that's most of the concern. It's not a security. It's mostly, um, I would say, uh, been used for illegal purposes, which are themselves not that harmful. Uh, of course, if we talk about drugs, that's another story. But overall, uh, safety, security is not too much of a concern. Could be, but has not been, even with all, with all the concern and fear after, of course, September 11. Of course, the expansion of the Panama Canal is a popular topic these days. Uh, people are paying a lot of attention because they're wondering to what extent it's going to have an impact on American trade and American businesses in terms of it's going to make uh, its American products more competitive or other countries more competitive. So there's a lot of questioning about what's going to be the outcome of, of this expansion. And a few years ago, I, I wrote a little bit of research about this, or I wrote a report uh, for a think tank. I was commissioned to write a report. And as a surprise, when we published it, we made it available online, it was picked up. And uh, my name became to circulate as somebody uh, was familiar with, with the topic. And every now I get a, a lot of uh, queries about, OK, what could be uh, the outcome of this on this type of business? I even get queries about uh, exporting coal from the United States to China <laughs> or uh, liquid natural gas. Uh, everything that, all the commodities, everything that moved is uh, people are questioning what could be the consequences of this expansion. I think we have reached some kind of a limit. That is, uh, we got improvement in speed not because, let's say, the planes, the ships, or the cars, or the trains are going faster. It was because we were able to move things in between modes more efficiently. That is, a ship arrive at a port, and it takes less time because of containers to move the cargo from the ship to the train or to the truck. So we got to, and because the ships were, were getting bigger and much bigger, the cost of transportation went down quite substantially. So because of all of that, it became easier to trade, and, be, and people got 
an impression that things were, the world was getting smaller, which it was in many ways. But now, the rising cost of energy, for instance, and many developing economies, you have problems with congestion. We're living in an era where the impact of transportation in terms of speed might not be as well as it was in, in, in the past. I first arrived at Austria in 1999, which was starting to be uh, about 15 years ago now. Uh, back then, I, uh, I came as part of the Department of Economics and Geography. Geography was essentially uh, some kind of a service department we were offering, and that back then called uh, core courses, which came later on came to be known as distribution courses. And eventually, we realized that there was some kind of an opportunity, and uh, Dean Firestone was also very helpful to say, hey, we have an opportunity here to let's say, move geography a step further and because of this global studies which seems to be catching up. Uh, so we, uh, in 2008, we took this opportunity and founded our little department, uh, Global Studies and Geography, we were only four professors back then. And it grew pretty quickly because it's uh, an interesting topic. Students relate quite a lot to it. It has a lot of dimensions, uh, cultural and very pragmatic and commercially oriented, but I have colleagues who are dealing with culture, uh, politics, and uh, of course, uh, economics, oh, and it became, a, let's say, a fairly solid, solid and, substan and substantial program. I teach mostly courses related to, of course, transportation, logistics. We have a course called iGlobalization, which is an interesting topic, uh, which, again, where I talk about all these issues, about how the stuff moves around, uh, around the world. Uh, I teach also geographic information system, which is how to uh, use a computer to make maps, which is also very uh, type of skill, which a type of skill which is very much in demand on the market. Uh, I teach also economic geography, resources, energy. I taught about population geography, geography of East and Southeast Asia, a fair, a, a whole range of courses. And what is fun in class is, let's say, we talk about a topic that you care a lot about and you try to convey some form of passion. Because I care about my, the cargo, I care about the containers, I care a lot about globalization because I think it's a very, very relevant topic. And I try to convey that passion to the students. Uh, hopefully successfully or more or less successfully depending on, on the semester or the cases. But that's what pretty much what I like. And also what I like very much is since I have a very practical field is I can talk about stu uh, to students about what's happening in the real world as it, as it goes on because I go to conferences and say, oh, I just came back from a conference and we discussed this issue. This is what seems to be a contention or a concern these days or this is what these companies are doing right now as, as we speak. So I have an opportunity to, be, to get the pulse of the market on, on, almost in real time and try to report this to the students.